You know, Zen Plus has been a great update. We've gotten uh, better core clock frequencies. You can get up to 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz on your 2700X or whatnot, all of those CPUs. But now it's time to look forward to the future because all we did was go from 14 nanometers down to 12 nanometers. It was a small process shrink. It wasn't anything exceptional. But now we have to look towards the future. What can we get out of Ryzen 3 or Zen 2, whatever we're gonna call it. I don't wanna start that argument again. I'm calling it Ryzen 3, Zen, Zen 2 is the official name. So we have an article here from Hot Hardware saying AMD 7 nanometer Zen 2 CPUs sampling this year for 2019 volume launch. We've known about this roadmap for a while. We got the original Zen, then we were gonna get Zen Plus, then Zen 2, then Zen 2 Plus, then probably Zen 3 sometime down the road where we've also had rumors of Zen 5 also being in development and that's where they're gonna actually move over to a different architecture. Who knows if that's all true, but looking at this, we see that during the recent earnings call with investors, AMD CEO, Dr. Lisa Su confirmed that AMD is already sampling seven nanometer Zen 2 processors and is gearing up for a volume launch in 2019. She said, we have a seven nanometer GPU based on Vega that will sample later this year. We actually did a video about that just yesterday, so you can check that out right there. And then we have a seven nanometer server CPU that will sample later this year. So that's going to be epic. We're gonna, the, the actual server CPU epic, EPYC, not epic like that's super dope although it's both getting a seven nanometer cpu well before intel is even on 10 nanometers you know fantastic she says and then obviously we have a number of products that are planned for 2019 as well so it's a very busy busy product season so that's amazing we're getting seven nanometer vega later this year probably just going to be in radeon instinct not something that consumers will get a hold of although i'm not exactly sure what we're going to get a hold of because we're still supposed to get the rx 600 series is that just supposed to be 14 nanometer plus vega or is that supposed to be 12 nanometer vega which the original talking about i have no idea it's really confusing there's not a whole lot of like are we even going to get new amd gpus on the consumer level this year who knows and then she further continues by saying seven nanometer zen 2 based product will wheel sample later this year to customers and that will be in product production in 2019 and we do believe that the adoption rate of the second generation could potentially be higher than the adoption rate of the first generation, mostly because customers will be more familiar with our systems and our products, and not to mention the fact that they've actually improved on their products. I mean, one of the biggest issues that we had with the original Ryzen was the fact that the motherboard support for frequency of RAM was really bad, and the Infinity Fabric on the Ryzen was so heavily dependent on RAM that if you got a bad motherboard that couldn't support anything above 2666, which is the majority of the motherboards that we use in the office, then you aren't getting the best performance out of Ryzen. But then with the X470 boards from everything that we've seen and all of the other reviews that we've watched, getting 3200 megahertz speed out of your RAM is a super easy thing. You just set it in the BIOS and then it's good, just like it is with Intel. So they're making iterative improvements that actually make a huge difference with the usability experience of Ryzen itself. So the Zen Plus upgrade, even if it was only a you know two to 300 megahertz increase in raw performance on the core clocks, there were other improvements on the back end that helped with Infinity Fabric that lowered the latency there, that allowed for better RAM speed increases. There was a whole lot that was developed there that made it great. But then we have more information on what we can expect from Zen 2's performance as far as core clocks and what the seven nanometer CPU process is going to allow for us because of Anon Tech doing an interview with Dr. Gary Patton, CTO of Global Foundries. So this is a long article. We're gonna put the link for this in the video description. You can read all of this yourself if you're super interested, but they talk a lot about the current process nodes, the, the LPs, the leading processes that are happening right now. And we get some information of what Global Foundries is expecting out of their seven nanometer process. So in the article, one of the questions is, with the first generation of seven nanometer, do you expect to be high volume production by the end of the year? And the Gary says, by the end of the year, we're most likely in early 2019 with a couple of key partners, our ASIC customers, of which there are quite a few, are also lead users of our seven nanometer process. That kind of sucks. Like mining is just going to be coming up and you just have to deal with it. They're going to be taking the chips, even if they're not taking the actual CPUs or the GPUs that are using the seven nanometer process, they're using the fab space on these, on these production lines. One of the interesting articles that I've read by Ryan Shrout, where he basically talks about how GPU manufacturers like Nvidia and AMD are going to struggle against ASIC manufacturers like Bitmain is because with mining, if you have that lead in performance, you can charge whatever the heck you want for it. With, whereas with like graphics cards, there's like this price ceiling of like, we don't want to pay more than 800 to a thousand dollars. And that's even, you know, called into question whether or not we're going to pay for that. So like with, with an ant miner, like they're selling it for $1,500. But honestly, they could probably charge $4,500 to $6,000, depending on how much of a process lead they have over their competition. And so if they're paying 
if they're getting paid that much per you know ant miner that they're selling that makes it so that they can they can pay a lot more for the fab space which means that nvidia and amd get pushed to the side so that our development of the new process technologies for the things that us consumers want is going to take a bit longer but then the key question that i think everybody's looking forward to is question number 17 saying does the first generation of 7 lp target higher frequency clocks than 14 lpp then gp says definitely it is a big performance boost. We quoted around 40%. I don't know how that, that exactly will translate into frequencies, but I would guess that it should be able to get up into the five gigahertz range, I would expect. That is fantastic. And then the follow-up question of, so you would do a custom version of 7LP for IBM, who is currently running 5.2 gigahertz on 10 core chips. Could you perhaps translate that 40%? GP says, I'm not a systems guy, so I wouldn't commit IBM to it, but certainly we are very focused on delivering it to IBM for power and integration of the system. Some of us worked with them for many years, so we have a good understanding of what they need. So five gigahertz on the Zen 2 architecture is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Like we're seeing that even with Zen Plus, with the improvements to IPC, with the improvements to the, to the Infinity Fabric, with the improvements to the memory clocks, even at 4.2 gigahertz, they are rivaling what Intel has on their consumer lineup. Like competing Zen Plus against Coffee Lake, it's absolutely great. And then the fact that we're also getting a eight core Coffee Lake, and then we're also getting Whiskey Lake because Intel's behind on the 10 nanometer process, like, AMD is super competitive at this point. And if they're going with Global Foundries, who also has seven nanometer process that we could actually see, you get up to a five gigahertz Zen 2 architecture. That is going to blow Intel out of the water, which is something that we desperately needed because Intel has been sitting on the four core high knees for a very long time. And then there's been a quite a bit of discussion about like, oh, is seven nanometer really seven nanometer? Isn't it the same as Intel's 10 nanometer? There's also a question and answer about that. So they ask, do you, Global Foundries, care what other semiconductor manufacturers call their processes? And then the answer is not really. Our customers know the difference. They get our design kit. They can lay out circuits. They know how dense we are. There's no confusion about what our node is. Our 14 nanometer, it's very competitive with other industry 14 nanometer and 16 nanometer foundry offerings. Our seven nanometer, which we know from benchmarking, is extremely competitive with other foundries offerings. We are not talking like the differences are 10%. We are talking about one or two point differences. Our 12 nanometer, we believe, is very competitive with other 12 nanometer offerings. We think that we are pretty well aligned with other foundries and we have tried to be consistent to avoid confusion. But you know, at the end of the day, our platform customers know what our density is. So that's a good point. I mean, obviously you can take that for him shilling for his own company. Like obviously he has to point out the fact that, you know, Global Foundries isn't really, you know, putting out something that's sub, sub par to the, to the competition. So that's, that's an expected answer, but then at the same time, like he is right that they have all of their designs out there. You know, you can actually look at it and see, I'm, I'm getting away like this is above my pay grade. I'm talking about crap, I don't know. But to know that we should expect a 40% increase on the process from 14 nanometer to seven nanometer, Ryzen Plus was 12 nanometers. So, I mean, we could expect 35%, 30 to 35%, getting five gigahertz on Ryzen is something that I'm super excited for. I don't know about you guys. What do you all think of this? How are you enjoying your Ryzen? Are you waiting out for Ryzen 2? I know that in the comments, a lot of people are saying, I'm not going for Zen Plus because I'm waiting for Ryzen 2 because, or I'm waiting for Ryzen 3. I'm waiting for Zen 2 so that I can actually get that five gigahertz core clock because I want to have that high single core frequency so that I can play the games that I enjoy. And then also I have a reason to buy them over Intel, which I mean, for all it's worth, Intel is really trying to find a way to actually out pace AMD. I mean, they're hiring Chris Cook. They have Raja Kadori. They've got Jim Keller. Intel's actually trying to move things forward because they've been stuck for a long time, but it looks like AMD actually, when Jim Keller came on board to, to produce the Zen architecture, they actually got something that's going to carry them forward for a while. Hopefully they don't rest on their laurels like Intel did, but I want to know what you all think. Do you think that uh, this is a great thing for AMD? Do you think Intel will actually come back and be competitive now that Jim Keller's on the team? Let me know either down in the comments or in the community discord. We can chat down there. With that being said, if you are picking up Zen Plus products, you can use our Amazon or Newegg affiliate codes that's in the video description. It gives us a small kick that helps us out a lot doesn't cost you an extra cent but then you get a decent product we get to keep the lights on here it's also a great thing be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video of speculation on all of the new stuff that's coming out with zen 2 the 5 gigahertz clock speed and 70 nanometer process and the interview with global foundry's uh, cto be sure to hit that like button also please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content i am brett with the ufd tech channel thank you so much for watching and i will see you all in the next video cheers <laughs>